Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, we're going over the three things that you can do after Zenithal highlighting. Are we good? There's no more. Your talent's mochi. I've seen plenty of videos going over how to do Zenithal highlighting. But one thing that I haven't seen is a video that talks about what you do after Xenophil highlighting. What is the point of doing all of this work if you're just going to cover it up? How do you utilize your Xenophil highlights to their full potential? Xenophil highlighting is the act of painting black from below and white from above to better illustrate how light would interact with your model. You can do your Xenophil highlights with an airbrush, a rattle can, or a paintbrush. All of these techniques will be applicable no matter what. If you would like to know some of my favorite tips and tricks for Xenophil highlighting, you can watch this video here. Now that we are all on the same page, let's get started. So what are the three ways that you can work with Xenophil highlights? First, you could use your Xenophil highlights as a roadmap. Second, you can incorporate Xenophil highlights into your final model by utilizing translucent layers of paint. And third, you can use Zenithal highlights as a base to help your vibrant and intense colors pop. Using Zenithal highlights as a roadmap is by far the easiest and most straightforward approach. The idea is to use your Zenithal highlighting work as a demonstration of where to put your highlights and shadows on your particular miniature, leaving you to interpret them with paint later. Since you are covering this model with opaque paint, you will not be able to tell that you started this miniature with Xenophil highlighting. Cardamom, don't be starting anything. From here, you have two options. If you are a beginner, I recommend taking a photograph of your Xenophil highlighted model. Take your model and photograph them in a very neutral lighting setup so that the light isn't affecting the highlights and shadows of your miniature. A neutral lighting setup means that your miniature will be softly and evenly lit from all angles. Photographing your miniature in front of a window on an overcast day will probably be the easiest to achieve this soft and even light. Now once you apply your base coat covering your Xenophil highlights, you'll be able to have a map that you can follow to know where to place your deeper darks and brighter highlights. My cats are causing chaos. This baby boy has learned which cupboard we put the treats in. Yeah. Did you think that I wasn't going to hear that? Did you think I wouldn't know? Option two is to memorize your Xenophil highlights. This is the way that I work and it will get easier the more frequently that you do it. Now you don't need to memorize everything all at once. Just work one section at a time. If you work step by step, quickly memorizing where the highlights and shadows fall, you're going to be able to paint this with ease. Using translucent layers of paint. You can use inks, contrast paints, glazes, and other transparent layers of paint to utilize your Xenophil highlights to their full potential. Inks are basically pure color, and you can put them over your Xenophil highlights, which is basically going to color the highlights and shadows that you already applied with your airbrush. Inks can also be applied with a paintbrush, but I do recommend using a dry brush to remove the excess ink that may have sunk into your recesses. If you don't, you'll end up with areas with more intense color. One of my favorite tricks is to combine ink and paint together in a 50-50 ratio to achieve a more opaque coverage while still being able to see your Xenophil highlights through your layers of paint. Since this mixture is somewhat translucent and you can still see your original Xenophil highlights, you can go ahead and just build off of them as you would if you were painting straight on top of them. Of course, you could either have photographed this or do it by memory. I talk about this more in the video that I referenced earlier, my favorite tips and tricks for Xenophil highlighting. Another option is utilizing glazes. Glazing is the act of taking very diluted paint and building layer upon layer to create colors, highlights, and shadows. Depending on the look you are going for, your Xenophil highlights may play a crucial role in your final model. However, you also could end up adding so many layers that your Xenophil highlighting is almost completely covered. 
There really isn't a wrong way to do it. As long as you are happy, that's all that matters. But in theory, you should be able to work with the Zenithal highlights underneath all of your layers of glazing. If you want to learn the perfect consistency for glazing, check out this video here. You could also use contrast paints over your Zenithal highlights. Contrast paints are rather translucent and their desire to sink into the recesses while allowing the Zenithal highlights to show through can lead to a very quick painting process if that's what you want. However, such a thing isn't really my style. I prefer far more control and contrast paints just aren't in my day-to-day -day arsenal. Depending on what colors you're putting over your Zenithal highlights, Zenithal highlighting can matter a lot. Vibrant colors like red and orange are very translucent due to the size of their pigments. Imagine trying to get a vibrant scarlet red over black primer. It's going to be a nightmare in comparison to the dream that is applying your blood scarlet red over white. Your Zenithal highlighting has already built this gradation for you, so painting such vibrant colors will become easy. So if you are considering using Zenithal highlighting and you know for a fact that your color scheme is going to be very vibrant and intense, Zenithal highlighting can be a huge help. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that it was useful and helpful to you. You can find all of my airbrushing tools in the description box down below. If you like what I do here, you can support me by subscribing, supporting me over on Patreon, or buying literally anything through the Amazon affiliate links down in my description box. It doesn't cost anything to you, it just makes me a little bit of extra money. I hope to see you again soon. Go ahead and message me on Instagram. That's the best way to get a hold of me. I look forward to seeing you on the next one and good luck painting. Mama will bribe. Mama is not above bribing. <laughs> Are we good? There's no more.